What you'll find is a diagram that greets you. And the first thing I want you to do, I've said this before, I'll re-emphasize it because it deserves to be re-emphasized, is I want you to redraw that diagram. Because when they give you a diagram, they're trying to help you out, but that diagram is not a substitute for the process your brain must go through in constructing your own diagram. You draw it yourself, you understand the thing better. Wonderful. So hopefully you're getting along the way there. I have not completed my diagram, but that's because there are some things I want to point out as I construct it that might be helpful to you. Here's the bare bones of it. You're given a function. They tell you what the equation of that function is. So I've hopped on onto my diagram because it seems like an appropriate and sensible place to put it. And the question you might notice is quite wordy. Now, you may need to think back. Think back a couple of weeks. When you see, maybe even, sorry, I take that back, maybe even to the end of last year, when you see a question and it's quite wordy, right, your, your ears should sort of prick up, or you, your eyes should prick, I don't know what your eyes do, light, light up? You should pay attention, okay, because the words almost certainly are trying to tell you there's something special about this question. Mathematicians love to steer away from using words because we can generally find more concise ways to say things with with symbols and with diagrams. So we're using words because there's something that we almost cannot say any other way. So read the question with me. It says, find the area of the region bounded by, and then there's that, the x-axis, which I've already drawn, should label it. And then they give you two lines, x equals a half and x equals two. They're the bits I haven't put on here yet, okay? Now, I wonder whose brain is ticking over and knows why this question is not simply given to you as a find, evaluate, and then there's some symbols with an integral. Why have they gone to all these words? Russell. So it says find the area. It's a curvy thing. We're clearly going to use an integral. So why haven't they just said evaluate and here's an integral? Why haven't they just done that? What, as Russell's identified, what is it about finding this area that demands a little more? Anyone? Michael? Okay, very good. This area that they've shaded already, and I'm about to shade now in blue, this area down here will render a negative integral, right? When you integrate that thing because it's beneath the axis, it will be negative, okay? So if they said just integrate from here to here, you're actually going to get the signed area, not the area area. Yes? So this thing which I've just shaded in blue, and this is why I waited to draw it, I'm going to have to treat differently to this other area which I'm going to shade in orange. Okay? So I think they even give you this coordinate over here. Is that one? Is that the one on the diagram? Yes? Okay. So I'm going to have to work out each of these separately as two different integrals. Okay? So now we've done our thinking, now we can have a go at this. The area will equal one integral at a time. I'm even going to use the same colors I had before. Here's the orange one. Its signed area is positive, so we can just do it from one value, let's you, to another. I think that's one, isn't it? That's one? We can just go from one boundary to the next without any fancy stuff. So I'm going to go from half to one. What am I integrating? What is this function? There it is, over there. Yeah? You happy with that? So that area in orange, sorry, that integral in orange corresponds to that area in orange. Now we do the negative one. Now because it's negative, rather than adding integral to integral, this next one I'm actually going to subtract. Does that make sense? Because when I get this integral, it will be negative. Double negative cancels out. You with me? What is the integral I'm going to form? Where do I start? I, I start from one, I go to two. Yeah? New boundaries, but same function. Whoops, that's an x. That's really messy, sorry. Same function, same integrand, it's done. Do you see now why they didn't just say, here's an integral, off you go. Half of this question, arguably the harder half, is to actually state the integral, to articulate it yourself, okay? Now the question is somewhat done and we just have to do the integration and evaluate. Can you help me do that? What will be now that we're in this topic, what will be the primitive? Log x. Take away x, and then you've got some boundaries, and you can evaluate those, right? Subtract. It's the same integrand, so you're going to end up with the same primitive. 
log x minus x. Different boundaries. You okay? Now just watch out, see that minus sign there? It's going to be something we have to watch out for because when I evaluate each of these, I'm then actually going to revert to my colors for a second. I should have done it here as well. I'm going to have like four objects. This take away this, and then this take away this. But this minus sign applies to everything over here. And that's an easy thing to miss when you're going through very quickly, right? So let's do it one step at a time. Upper boundary, log one, take away one. Yep, there's the upper boundary. Take away log half, bless you, minus a half. How's that? Does it look all right? Now I do the next bit. This is coming from here, following along, minus. To keep it all as one object, I'm going to draw a big bracket here so that I know everything I'm about to do has this minus sign applied to it. Is that okay? Do you need to do this? Of course you don't. But it's, a, it's an error correcting measure that I know I'm bad at forgetting to fix that negative later on. So this just helps me to remember. What are we going to get here? Log 2 take away 2 minus log 1 take away 1. How's that? Are you happy with that? Okay, at this point, let me just hit pause. I reckon you guys could take care of this. Remember, you've got lots of logs flying around. You have log laws too. So what you end up with down the bottom may look different to the persons next to you if you use different log laws to simplify. I'm gonna let you try and work out what you think between you guys, what would be the, the most simple final way to actually state your answer. Don't forget, by the way, what was the original question? Was the original question to evaluate an integral? It was to find the area, so therefore, Eventually, I will have to say these are units squared. I'll give you maybe 30 to 60 seconds to have a go. If you think you have a final answer, call me over. I just want you to have a look at what I've done on the next line. I'm not finished yet either, because I want to talk about how to get to the end. What have I done? Two main things. Um, I'm trying to do this not all at once, because I feel like if I do it all at once, there's like four or five different operations that I've had to keep in my mind, and it's just an easy way to make a silly mistake, right? Um, it's just like if you see someone, <laughs> teachers, right, we like to carry lots of things to and from class. And if you ever see a teacher and they're holding like a million, like they're holding their, you know, iPad and then textbooks and then camera and then try, and then they're like trying to open a door, they're just asking to make a mistake and drop something on the ground. And in the same way, if you're doing four or five simplifications at the same time, you're kind of asking to, like, where do silly mistakes come from? This is not the only place, but this is a big one, okay? So I've evaluated the log ones here and here, which are zero. Hope you guys got to that part. Um, I also resolved this extra set of brackets there. So that's a minus, that's a plus. So far, so good. Now you'll notice I have this little hole here. I haven't quite filled this in. I said before that we have lots of different log laws. So we could go through a few different paths to get to here. There's a particular log law that I think you'll notice makes it all collapse quite easily. And it depends on this term here. This doesn't have to be the only way you do it, but it is quite error prone if you try other ways. I'm going to try and write this log not as a fraction, right? But as a log of a whole number. What log law can I use to take advantage of this? Say it again, Jeremy, a bit louder. Okay, so interesting. That one wasn't the one I was going, but I'm going to write it anyway, because it's true. Log of a half is log one take away log two, isn't it? Like it's the, di the, the division turns into subtraction. But you already know what log one is, which is, is zero. You saw that? So what you end up with here is negative log two. Is that okay? There's another way that might be slightly more direct to get there. Can anyone see it? Yeah, Eric? Yeah, I can rewrite this half as two to the negative one. And so the negative one as a power can come out the front. You end up in the same spot, so I'm happy with both. Okay? Now the reason why I highlight this is because now have a look when I start to collect like terms. This is a positive 2. Is that okay? You see where the double negative cancels? That's a positive 2. Minus 1, minus 1. So all those things I just highlighted in green, they're all gone. They all cancel. Okay? There are other things that cancel too. This is log 2, positive log 2. You see that? Is that okay? This is minus log 2. Log 2 minus log 2. These guys, which I've highlighted in slightly different green, also cancel out. What's left? I think if I've counted right, the only thing remaining is this term, a half. And of course, as we pointed out, it's an area, so it's half of a unit squared. Are you happy with that? 